So one of the um, more instructive processes that we've gone through in terms of partnerships this, this, uh, over this past couple of years has been uh, UC Braid. Um, and uh, this is where we've tried to bring together the five UCs. You know, yes, we're all UCs, but uh, no, we're not all UCSF. Um, and uh, so Rachel Seck has been, um, is our assistant director that's been responsible for this as well as some other uh, programs. And she's gonna give you all um, uh, an overview um, of what the group is working on. And we wanted you all to see this because we think there's a lot more opportunity to do more with this organization. It also has lessons about um, the potential utility too of thinking about broader partnerships. So Rachel. Thank you, Clay. Good morning, everybody. Um, so when I was, just a quick uh, intro, so when I was asked to give a brief presentation about UC Braid and this network, I was really excited, and not because it was short and brief, but really because I think this is a great opportunity to um, raise awareness about this group's activities and efforts and actually to get people to start thinking and giving us feedback on how we can actually meet the potential of this group. Um, so I'm going to be talking about UC Braid, and what is UC Braid? So Braid stands for the University of California Biomedical Research Acceleration, Integration, and Development Consortium, and heretofore referred to as Braid. Um, it was created about two years ago, and it's led by the principal investigators of the uh, affiliated clinical and translational science centers at the five biomedical campuses, so UC Davis, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Irvine, and San Diego. And so why does BRAID exist? Well, it's been the conviction of the leadership, and not just the BRAID leadership, but leadership across the campuses, deans and others, that these, there's issues across the campuses that are really better solved together than separately. And there's a recognition that there's shared policies. We work in an environment where there are some shared policies that we can work within, and there's resources and complementary expertise across these campuses. And th also that a recognition that sometimes it just takes a force of will to get some of these difficult challenges moving forward. And in my less than one year working with Braid, I can attest that that force of will is live and strong and <laughs> moving forward. Um, so what does BRAID do? Well, the biggest thing is that what they're really trying to do is identify these shared challenges across the campuses and leverage the expertise at those campuses to work on the, for sol solutions for those issues and use the resources across those campuses as well. They um, ultimately are, we're looking at developing system-wide solutions and knowing that those, these are, can be policy changes, new infrastructure, or standardized processes. And how does it work? Well, the biggest thing is, Braid doesn't and isn't a parallel organization. We aren't here to duplicate systems and, and governance and infrastructure. It's really all about working with the people across the campuses, bringing them together, the, the, the folks that actually conduct the work, the folks that actually conduct the policies and implement them. Um, and the governance is really a conduit for the needs. It's taking the needs from the investigators, from the researchers, from the staff, and identifying them and helping prioritize them, and then identifying the campus experts and the people that are in those areas across the campuses and bringing them together to work on those solutions, and then enabling partnerships and trying to provide some little bit of administrative support as well to move these efforts forward. So um, just to give you kind of a flavor of some of the in initial areas um, where Braid has been working, I, th I thought I'd at least first touch upon um, UC Rex, which stands for UC Re Research Exchange. And this is actually a full-fledged initiative that has funding from the Office of the President um, that's affiliated with Braid. And they, they're actually, and I'll give you a quick description, they're actually creating um, the first ever clinical, cross-campus clinical data, data query system where you can actually query data at the patient level and aggregates as well. And again, the, this is a really large initiative. I think um, it's being led by Lucilla Ono Machado at UC San Diego, and I think Latisse is in the audience, so she's, there she is. So she's the um, program lead there. If you have any questions about that, definitely go to Latisse. Um, there's definitely some others I know in this room that work on this effort. 
Um, in terms of, I'll touch upon a couple of these, and, and um, you can always come to us if you have questions about the others, but in terms of contracting an IRB, this is um, really a group effort, again, as I mentioned, across campuses, working with the Office of the President as well, working on things like prioritizing and, and negotiating master clinical trials, um, the expansion of the memorandum of understanding understanding for IRBs, and that's the IRB directors working very closely with the Office of the President and assisting them in expanding the memorandum of understanding um, to include high-risk clinical studies. And then, as you can see, a, couple of the, a few of the other initiatives here that we've been working on. And then, I should also mention, I mentioned there's funding for the, the UC Rex initiative, but essentially the rest of the initiatives have been moving forward without any designated funding. Um, it's really a lot of passionate people coming together and working together. However, we have recently put in a proposal to the Office of the President. We're hoping to hear from them within, hopefully, ne early next month um, to provide some seed funding to move forward the current initiatives that we're working on, but also some, some other initiatives that we're, we're thinking about. I'll touch upon just a couple of these, um, the research course sharing and the faculty research profiles. And so these would be initiatives, and again, these are proposed initiatives. Um, where you would be providing actually a cross-campus system-wide ways of searching intra and cross-campus um, for resources uh, that are available and also faculty expertise and researcher ex expertise. This really just a quick overview of all the various people that are really, really passionate and work really, really well together across the campuses and the Office of the President um, across these efforts. And a thank you. I know a lot of you are in the room, so thank you to all of those for everybody's effort that do, do this along with their day job. So this is, it's been fantastic to actually see this in action. And I think with that, I'll leave it up to questions, and I'm going to ask Clay to come up as well to join because he's been helping lead the helm on Braid. Great. Great. So thanks, Rachel. Sure. So yeah. So w again, one of the reasons we wanted you guys to see this is that it keeps coming up over and over again. You know, we identify problems that are at, at the UC level or at the UCSF level, but could be addressed more effectively, more broadly at the UC level. And then people don't know that this entity exists, um, and and they're surprised that they haven't heard about it. So we wanted to avoid that. Um, the, uh, I think you know, the, there's re, there is real money here. So UC Rex has uh, got a, a $5 million grant. Um, it's in, just in its first year, so a lot more should come from that. And that should cascade to a much more useful cross-UC platform for electronic health records. And then the proposal that we put in, I don't know if I should tell them because we don't know how much we'll get funded, but it's, it's a $4 million proposal. It includes funding for some pretty ambitious projects that were identified by the, the group of names that you saw, um, and we hope will become a vehicle to collect ideas from the broader UC community, bet on like we do with our open forum now, and select projects to move forward. So it really has a potential to grow quite a bit. So, I think questions, Jeanette. Jeanette? So the question I have is, I love profiles. <laughs> Profiles. Yeah. And my understanding is that you are going to do profiles with Harvard first. Is it now going to be with all the UCs first, or? Well, you want to answer? Uh, sure, I, I could ask that. So, so UCS Profiles has been a collaboration with with Harvard, and they're actually the developers of the system, right? And we implemented an instance here, here at UCSF, and then have actually grown and expanded upon that. And so, what we're with we showed here is a, pr a proposed project, and actually initiative that would be quite large, is to expand either profiles or something like that across the, the campuses so that you could do what you do right now. So you search for expertise and potential collaborators, but do it not only at UCSF and find those folks, but across the campuses. And they, they, they want to use profiles, actually. So at least, <laughs> at least three of the others want to use profiles. One's not quite sure yet. Um, in, in, so that'll make it easier, but we want that search to occur regardless of what local platform they've got. But that, them using profiles too shows the value of doing this. So we can take, you know, I don't, I shouldn't say how much we spend on profiles every year, but it's a lot and it's going down, but it's a lot. That we can take their costs way down by supporting them through the infrastructure that we've already built. And in that, you know, and then they can do that for us for other projects. So it, it can, dramatically reduce to uh, upfront investment costs for things like profiles. Yeah. 